Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, last run leaves a little bit of a, a, a bad taste in your mouth, but that's okay. Hey, check it out. It's the randomizer, baby. Uh, we got... That's Tainted Apollyon Blue Baby. I think that's that's a lot of fun, and I'm not even being sarcastic. Um, let's just make sure it is Tainted Apollyon. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so the game has been cursed lately. A few soft locks. Um, I mean, no, nothing will leave a worse taste in your mouth than uh, being on a fun run, the game crashing, and then also not being able to continue. I do, I, I turned item descriptions back on. Uh... And I'm, I'm happy to be here. And look at this. I'm, I'm happy to see this as well, if, if I may. 50% chance for a coin. What a ripoff. 67% um, chance of getting increased angel deal chances. Repeating, of course. 50% chance of a random chest. I've, I, I feel betrayed. Hey, don't, don't die, like, immediately. Would it be funny... No, I would, I would, I might not install. Um, but yeah, like, it, it, I mean, I apologize. The last episode ending kind of like in media res sucks pretty bad. But also, like, you know, you gotta pick this up. Don't, don't be a hero. Um, it, it really, like, it is what it is. I, I don't know what to say, really. I did, I, I promise you, I didn't incept a, an easy ending on that one just to get myself out of a jam. <laughs> I would have much rather just gone through with the actual uh, the the run as listed. It was a, it was a fun one. I was having a great time. We even like lost a little bit of HP being a fool, which means that we would have had you know a little bit of tension coming up and and a late game uh, boss fight against the beast. A lot of fun. Anima Sola. We're gonna use Abyss by accident when we mean to use Anima Sola. I'm gonna say mm, about a billion times. Crawl space incoming. Um, I, I, it's just science. It's, it's destined to happen. But Anima Sola is, is actually extremely good and fun. Uh, I, I like it a lot. I think it's a, a very powerful item. Now, we are just going to, you know, normal paths. I just, I, I forgot what button to press, but I'm, I'm feeling better. <laughs> um, good, good stuff. You got out of there. Uh, we're we're just going normal paths unless you know there's a there's a built-in unless there right which is like maybe we will find ourselves in a position to take out some of the more annoying enemies or bosses with the uh, with Anima Sola and I think the way you play with Abyss is I, I think it's very similar to playing with the Void but the way that you do it in my opinion I'll just take a look here I'm willing to fish for it. Remember Aaron Burr from Hamilton? I'm willing to fish for it. You didn't you didn't see it? That's fine. I, I understand. No harm, no foul. I think we'll probably buy the HP. But anyway, um, I think you turn... Just trying to remember how to play the game here. Uh, bad actives are like the arbitrage opportunity. You tend to get a few useless actives on any given uh, Isaac run to be able to leverage them in order to get yourself uh, you know a, a fly which is basically a damage upgrade uh, in, instead is good and we'll still use it on uh, on bad passives as well but we don't you know void itself was good on bad passives too this is like, you know, we're, we're, we're doubling up. I actually, I'm a, I'm a believer in Midnight Snack here for a couple of reasons. One is, um, well, the obvious, I think. HP is a pretty important resource. And then the other one is that uh, gives us more plays here. 33% chance for an angel deal. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Miter is good. Uh, definitely not worth giving up. Really? Wow. Uh, Sacred Orb, which I've never had. Prevents low-quality items from spawning. Greatly increases the quality of items that will spawn. I can see why people are big fans of this item. So we're not going to suck that up. Uh, I also thought it was an active because everybody has been calling it the Holy Hand Grenade. So we now like maybe have the Tainted Lost item pool or something like that. I, I don't really want to... Uh, 
you know, get seven troll bombs spawned and then die on a run that is actually kind of sick here. So we are still missing some items. I, I don't know what. <laughs> now I'm like, I'm, I'm lost. But we'll, we'll probably figure it out on stream today, is my guess. I'll use a bomb for this. Yeah, because I, I, I got to stream Isaac today, you know? It's the first stream back from vacation. You got to get a little Isaac. Maybe a little crossword puzzle. A little Isaac. A little crossword puzzle. A little Isaac. A little crossword puzzle. I, I will say one of my big problems with playing a, 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 a poly on non-tainted version. Ooh. I'll do it again. Bop, bop. Uh, is that I, I always lean too hard into the theme of the character. And if I get something that's even, like, slightly bad or even just not good enough, I'm like, oh, suck that up immediately. And then, you know, oftentimes I've found myself, like, finish... Oh, dude, we have to... This is just a dream come true, really. Um, I'll, I'll finish a run uh, by dying and be like, what the heck was I doing? I, I don't have any items. <laughs> uh, random chest, please. Uh, Red hearts, thank you so much. 33% uh, chance for three coins. I can't believe we're calling them, man. Okay, so we just we want a little bit more HP, and then we're back to the races here. We've got, like, the perfect sack room build right now. Lots of HP, high-quality items, um, and Maggie's faith is, like, is just disgusting, man. So I gotta, like, remember not to lean so hard into the theme on Tainted Apollyon and just create an army of flies out of items that would have been better than a fly. Luckily, that's not really a problem right now. We, we seem to find ourselves in a in a, a, a position with quite a lot of leverage so far. I guess we'll take this to protect our deal with the devil, and I don't mind uh, sending it into uh, an eddy room if we got it. Certainly want to take every available opportunity here. And hey, you know, if the last run left a bad taste in your mouth, like I said, you, you and me were not so different. 100% angel chance? This is... We're, we're, this is truly blessed. Um, hopefully, this one is like you know working that uh, that bad taste into a good taste. Bad taste, by the way. A Peter Jackson movie. You might not know it. Excuse me, NL. Are you confusing uh, yourself? It, it's you. You mentioned a Peter Jackson movie, but it's not either King Kong, The Hobbit, or The Lord of the Rings. Nah, man. Like, okay, Peter Jackson. Here's the thing. A lot of people know you know Peter Jackson for the. Tolkien movies, but he had a career as kind of like a weird uh, indie horror comedy uh, filmmaker in New Zealand first. Most people probably know about the movie Dead Alive, and we'll definitely take a Tears upgrade. I will definitely take the Eucharist, man. I mean, this is... I always feel like the Eucharist is like, it's just a guy who plays Euchre. You know, like, the mentalist is a guy whose mental is very strong. It's like the Eucharist is like a guy who's like, oh, I, I took all the turns on that. I took all the tricks on that turn. That's that's real verbiage. That's not, there's nothing monka s there. He's about to shoot. So I'm going to blow your mind, by the way. Because we got such an Eddie Room-focused build, uh, we're probably going to abyss the key piece to turn it into a fly. So that we have two flies for our next angel fight, um, which I do want to do. I was hoping we'd be able to get that, but um, so just turn that into a fly, and then let's do some fish in here. Still, most people will know Dead Alive, and Dead Alive is a is a really great horror comedy. Like if, if I don't even know how to describe it. If you're into like deliberate B movie stuff, like Dead Alive is is a genuine classic of the genre. Um, Bad Taste is still pretty good. It's, it's the movie he did, Peter Jackson did, before Dead Alive. Some people will tell you that uh, Dead Alive is not as good as Bad Taste. I would disagree with that. I, I personally find that Peter Jackson really hit his stride with Dead Alive. Also known as Brain Dead, depending on what part of the planet you choose to live in. Just want to see what we got. Okay, I mean, I, I like a bone heart. Don't get me wrong. Do I like a... Yeah, I think I like a bone heart. Anyway, I, I would recommend him if you've never seen him. 67% chance for a soul heart. 33% chance for a, an angel item. 
life goes on. Troll bombs, just get him out of here. Get him out of here, man. I don't want to see this crap. <laughs> we are, unless we get hit. Because we, we do want the key piece, honestly. But it, unless we get hit, we're probably going to play one more time. We got a pretty good thing going here. Like, the double flies are nice. Super flies me. You remember when every documentary on Netflix was just Super Size Me, but with, like, a different chemical? So there's Super Size Me, where Morgan Spurlock eats only McDonald's. Uh, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> he eats only <clears throat> McDonald's for uh, a month straight, and, you know, his, his PP stops working. Uh, and then there was, like, Super High Me, which I think, uh, you know, comedian... Uh, smoke some cannabis every single day but then there was like you know the the super size me that I I don't know why they weren't able to use like the actual verbiage but it was called like you know fat and loving it or something like that where the guy just drank smoothies for like two weeks straight it was uh it was, it was a period in 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 filmmaking don't kill me <laughs> don't kill me where, where literally, it was just like everywhere you look. It, wait, it's all super size me? Yeah. It always has been. That's the meme, right? More or less. Okay, down to the next floor. Remember, we're just going to Blue Baby. We're just having fun. We're just going to Blue Baby and having fun. So far, so good. Anyway, that's that's all I got. Ooh. Love this room. This, this room's a lot of fun. It's, it's a little spooky from time to time. Hey, you know what you might want to do is occasionally use Anima Sola, one of the most, like, overpowered and underrated items in the game. Here, I'm like, you know what? That's that's a prime abyss target. This is also not that bad, but I think I'm going to abyss it because I can, quite frankly. People will be mad because Minimush has a lot of fans in the stands. especially He doesn't know that they uh, buffed it for repentance. Look. At some point, you know, a little bit of speed, a little bit of range, you know, there's something to like, but you know what's even better than that is uh, just, like, another fly. I, I didn't think that jumper cables would work for this, by the way, for flies. I figured uh, jumper cables might work uh, for Anima Sola. Like, it might either hit two enemies or have uh, double the duration, either of which are totally acceptable in my world. Was wondering, just, just as a hypothetical, like, if, if it would be possible to get rooms with enemies. Now, I, I, I said that... My intention was to say that... On rooms with no enemies, we had several of those in a row, and then now I've been made to look like a, like a fool. One more room. Anyway, th this run is looking, like, pretty much unkillable. Especially keeping in mind we get extra angel deals uh, every single floor. Which we're probably not going to want to use Abyss for, because we also are getting only better quality items. Like, it's it's a little absurd what we got going on here. I'm even willing to sack my spirit heart in here. I'm really looking for an eddy room on every single floor. Like, if I was running for American president... Um, which is one of the most noteworthy president uh, presidential offices, I would say. I don't know if that's a little controversial, but... I would say of of the presidential offices worldwide, the American president is is one of the ones that people pay the most attention to. Hold on, hold on. Uh, we could bomb again. I think I'm gonna. And uh, I'm gonna do it one more time because I hate you. I I think that PhD is worth buying. Peeler, like I don't really want uh, peeler orbs. I don't want the cubes of meat. Um, we could buy it and then turn it into a single fly, but it's kind of an expensive buy to just get a single fly out of it, in my opinion. So that's why, that's why I went PhD instead. And it's already given us the value on this floor of, of two bombs. Huge growth. Okay. That's very nice. We're not going to be late because there's nothing to be late for on this run. I, I'm, I'm reminding myself more than I'm reminding you, to be honest. Anyway, should be a good week coming up, uh... Shorter week for me, because I wasn't working on... Well, I was recording, but I wasn't streaming on Monday. Um, but a, a cool week nonetheless. It, it feels like... I, I feel like I've had a much easier time talking 
uh, over the last few videos because I actually like exited my house and saw other people and as a result had something to complain about. It's it's a nice feeling for sure. Like I certainly I, I think you know it did a pretty good job and it, it's not like we're going out constantly now, but. You know, I did a pretty good job maintaining uh, some kind of conversational momentum over the course of the past 18 months-ish. <laughs> Two circular auras? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have any bombs. I don't have any bombs. I can't, I can't break you. Whatever, we'll get, we'll get you next time. Um, thought I did a pretty good job of keeping my mouth moving over the course of the pandemic, uh, which I guess is still ongoing. Um, but it is, it's nice to, I didn't know how lucky I had it, man, to, to constantly be beset by weirdos outside, like at my leisure at all times, and mostly just be concerned about the fact that they were mildly inconveniencing me or other people around them through their ignorance, instead of, uh, you know, being worried that, uh, you know, they would infect me or my family with a virus, you know? I don't know if I was naive to not be worried about the virus stuff back then, or if, if uh, you know, like pre-COVID, or if I was, uh, you know, just entitled. Probably a little bit of both. <laughs> it's what I'm, that's my guess. Sometimes the truth does lie in the middle. Ooh, I, I see an eddy floor. I see a little silhouette of a spike. I have to say, I so I've talked about this a uh, few times now, which is not abnormal. Um, to be honest with you, I think we're just gonna suck that up. Um, and remember, the flies scale with your damage. So we, you know, getting synth oil on the last floor is actually like an extremely great get for us. That's about as comfortable as I feel there. Um, but. Uh, I've talked about this. One of the things, and again, this is like, you gotta be very careful about the way you phrase this. Pandemic has inspired a lot of changes in the, you know, by necessity in the way that businesses operate, okay? Restaurants included or perhaps even especially, right? I just want to see what this is. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. Um, we still don't have a bomb, <laughs> but that's okay. We got the Eddie room, so if we just get enough HP, we can... We can get angel statues, or we can get a bomb from the boss, maybe. But um, one of the things that it's done is actually, like, and we're taking this for spun, basically. Oh, my God, man. One of the things that it's done is, uh, for me, it's alleviated a concern, a, a, a minor annoyance that I had in restaurants quite frequently, which is... Um, so much of the service being gated by like waiting for the one specific liaison that you have in the restaurant to show up and ask you the question that you need to be asked in order to socially acceptably respond. Hey, can we get the bill, please? Or yeah, actually, like we're ready. Are you guys? Can I get you guys something to drink? Oh, actually, we're totally ready. Like we don't. We can order food right now as well. We don't need to do this whole drink. Then like five minutes later, you bring the drinks over, and then you go. Do you need a few minutes? And I go, No, nah, you got six things on the menu. It's been 20 minutes. We had it figured out before we even walked in the door. Um, now, a lot of places uh, have QR code based menus, which is cool um, as long as you got a QR code reader in, in your phone, which you can get for free. Uh, you know what? Sure, go ahead and give me this. Give me that. And it's nice, like, I, do I prefer like a paper menu? No, actually I don't. I actually, I much prefer the QR code reader. Um, makes a lot of sense to me. And then some other places also have it like implemented so you can order via the QR code menu instead of having to wait for a server to come. Um, which I imagine like if you're of a certain age is gonna be like, you're going to be very upset by this change if it happens in, in the city in which you re reside. Um, because if you're used to, like, someone's going to come around and you're, you're also used to getting indignant, if you're like, where the heck are they? Then you're going to ju just get ready because you're going to get a lot of it. I don't feel comfortable playing the Eddie Room. See you next floor. Um, and that's great. Being able to just order as fast or as slow as you want and then it'll come over. That's beautiful. But then on top of all that, some of them let you pay for the food on the app. And I, we definitely could have played the Eddie Room for the record. But I know what you're going to say. Um, you're going to say, how do I know how much to tip? I'm not a, a, a tip zealot necessarily, okay? Like, I'm not... Uh, 
I'm not one of those people who's like, in all situations, you should tip 50% or whatever, okay? I'm also not one of those people who saw Reservoir Dogs and Steve Buscemi's character uh, arguing about how, like, he always gives zero tips, because here's a tip, change the legislation if you got a problem with it, uh, and said, ooh, that's my guy right there, I'm gonna make that my whole personality, and anytime tipping ever gets brought up, I'm gonna, like, start an argument. You know, I'm not responsible for a lot of the social norms. Some of the social norms in this, uh, in this world I might be a little responsible for, I don't know, but I'm not responsible for all of them. All I know is, um... You know, tipping is is the custom here, so as a result, I tip. And what I'm gonna say you might um, take it as uh, a little uh, submissive millennial coastal elite, uh, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, afraid of conflict. I I really only have three tips. Okay, I, I tip like, and and it's not a flex, but I'll tip like twenty percent or eighteen percent if if the meal. Uh, went as expected. Maybe a couple of minor hiccups. Like, even if the food is like, oh, sorry, the kitchen's backed up, so it's gonna be a few extra minutes. I'm, I'm not cutting someone's tip for that. You know, I, I understand that it's meant to be a, a, a reward or something for good service, but that's not really what it is anymore. It's more of like a... This business wouldn't be able to function if you didn't subsidize the wages of the person bringing you your plates which is strange but anyway um look it's it's a this is why i don't want to get into the issue is it's, it's a complicated one right um but in spite of that you know that's that's like an 18 to 20 percent tip pretty much no matter what it's whatever one speaks to me on the on the debit machine uh first then there's like, I, I've gone as high as like a 25 or even like, it, it, it look, if it's a, an expensive meal, you know, 20 is probably good enough. But if it's like, if you got something really, ch there's been situations where like, you know, I'll, I'll go to a place, I'll get like a one steamed bun for $3.50. And then when it asks for a tip, I'll tip like, you know, a dollar because it's a round number. Okay. And I'm not trying to flex, but that is like a 30 something percent tip. So, we, you know, if, if the circumstance serves or if service is, like, insanely good, then sure, you know, you'll give a little bit extra. And then there's zero, but that really, like, the the zero situation has happened to me, like, maybe less than three times in my entire, you know, two decades plus of, of well, decade and a half of, of, like, paying for my own meals at restaurants. It really doesn't happen that often. It requires, like, an extreme degree of either, like, ignorance or... Like, I'm not one of those people who's like, even if you bring me the wrong food, like, I'm I'm like, I get it. Everybody's tired. Take care of yourself. Here's 18%, you know? Don't you feel like that's enabling bad service? Every... I, 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 don't, I think that maybe they're just tired. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why, like, so many people, they seem to go out in public with a chip on their shoulder, like everybody's trying to screw them over. Like, I, I get it. It's good to be wary. It's good to be skeptical. I also harbor a sneaking suspicion that the demographic that is uh, the most annoying for service staff when they go out are also the most likely to fall prey to uh, multi-level marketing scams that uh, basically flies in the face of the idea. Well, you got to be careful out there because, you you know, people are always trying to get you. Yeah, well, it seems like you got got. So you, I think you you maybe were not applying your... Uh, your skepticism in the proper uh, situation there. That being said, this is like literally the exact definition of a straw man. But because most people in my demo don't sell LuLaRoe, and if anything, have probably the same opinion that I do about those sorts of companies, um, they're probably going to say based. So you can use a fallacy if people agree with you. That's the unfallacy fallacy. But anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, tipping. I don't even remember how I got myself onto this subject. Um, I was going out to rest. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the QR code menu. You can pay before you get the food. You, some of the places, I've, I've, I mean, I've only been out to eat like five times uh, in the past like two weeks or something. Like, I mean, it's a lot, but we were on vacation. You know, okay, I think we built in enough caveats here. Um, regardless. 
some places uh, that you you can pay, you know, when you order the food, which I can understand why that might annoy you, even though I just basically am happy. Like it's worth the convenience for me. The the risk that the service will be bad and I'll regret giving like an eighteen percent tip instead of like a you know five percent tip or a single penny just to let them know who has the power here or whatever, like like some kind of weirdo. Um, that is outweighed by the fact that like, ooh, I don't have to ask anybody for the bill. You gotta be some kind of psycho to ask for a tip refund, too. But anyway, here's... I will say, I'm not sure that all restaurants are doing it um, in, in a way that's good for them. And here's what I'm gonna say about that, okay? Because I know... It, it, oh, here comes NL standing the corporation again. But while we were away uh, on vacation, we ate at a restaurant that had a QR code menu. I said, great, okay? My wife had a pulled pork sandwich. I got a, a falafel that, to be honest with you, was middling, but it was a nice, you know, it was a, a, a good place, spacious, you know, plenty of space for the baby stroller to be there. Um, regardless, okay, regardless, we paid, but as we ordered. When I paid, it was like, in order to pay, you need to set up an account. And I said, okay, let's do it. So I set up an account. And then when I set up the account, it said, because this was your first order, you get a $15 coupon. This is where I'm like, you're terrible at business. If you're the restaurant, I, I can't say that because maybe the service that the restaurant uses, um, you know, has a bunch of, uh, you know, venture capital funding they don't mind blowing through to, like, acquire new users or something like that. But anyway, um, regardless, I was expecting to pay, you know, X amount of money, and I was totally happy paying X amount of money. Uh, and then, for what I perceive as no reason, and I'm not complaining, but for what I perceive as no reason, uh, they went, you know how we were going to charge you, let's say, 60 bucks? Guess what? Now is 45 just because you paid the only way we actually allow you to pay at this restaurant. It's nice, but I, you know, the the restaurant industry, I, which I'm not involved in. By the way, this is a great item. Let's suck it up. <laughs> just wanted to annoy you, I suppose. Um, I know it seems impossible but from everything i've heard uh, as an outsider the restaurant industry actually has like pretty thin margins you wouldn't think so because anytime you know you go to dinner with your dad or your grandpa or something like that it's always like ah 14 bucks for a hamburger there's only 850 worth of you know food in this but you know you got rent electricity labor insurance etc so i'm not staying in the corporations by the way and we we have to take this because we're going just the default path to blood of the marty what, what a great character and what a great run we're having here um i'm not staying in the corporation saying like, oh it's so hard for mr corporate i'm uh, i'm simply saying now like the business is already probably suffering over COVID. now they're just giving 15 bucks you know back to people who were big for nothing <laughs> Some places will be like, hey, if you sign up for our mailing list, we'll give you, like, a free small drip coffee. This place was like, hey, here's 15 bucks off uh, just for coming in. Like, I I don't know if it's a lost leader or, or like, a, a sale or anything like that either because it wasn't, like, advertised anywhere. It was just, like, as I went to hit pay, it was like, by the way, here's 15 bucks off. Maybe, maybe it's, like, a good way to get customer loyalty, but, like, I'm going to use whatever QR code app, you know, the... The restaurant asked me to. I'm not going to be like, oh, I have my own, actually. Uh, so, it, I mean, it was good. Don't get me wrong. But I, I was just surprised to see it in, like, a dine-out situation. I understand that, you know, Uber Eats and DoorDash are at a point where, like, once a week they send you a coupon. It's like, hey, here's 20 bucks off your next meal. Because they're, uh, you know, aggressively trying to acquire users and, you know, s strangle all of their competition uh, out of business and then jack up prices later. You know, they're, they're permanently uh, pre-profit, even though you're paying 30 bucks for a $15 burrito. This was the opposite. I was paying, you know, 15 bucks for it. Well, it wasn't a $30 burrito. I had a 20-ounce IPA as well. That's why the bill got racked up a little bit more. So sue me. So this, uh, some people would tell you, don't do what we're doing here. Those people are cowards. And to be honest, they are to be listened to. You should listen to them. You should listen to your friend Billy Zane. He's a cool dude. He just wants what's best for you. 
The body is a wonderland? Sure, I'll take that. We, we could make flies out of it, but... That won't be necessary. I don't think you're going to give us a key piece, and that's that's the annoying part for me. Yeah, because we've already uh, we've already converted everything into key pieces. That it would have been nice. I don't even know why we're doing that. Then <laughs> what are we doing there? I don't know. Basically, we're just losing a bunch of HP. But we did get the body, which makes our Eddie build that much better in the future. But then, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, who cares about an Eddie room build when you can't get any... Well, I guess you can still get an Angel deal out of that. Who cares, man? I... It, honestly, in a situation where our flies all scale with damage, it's going to be very hard to get me to drop the best damage trinket in the game. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know. We might be closing in on the tier cap. If I'm being honest, we kind of already got that, though. So why don't we just suck that up for another fly? And we were not at the tier cap. But you got to think that at, at 6.00, we probably are. All righty. So life life is good here. Anyway, I'm, I'm all for the, the QR code menus. I really do think it alleviates a common problem, which is, and, and you know, it feels so quaint to complain about this now, but I was go freaking going off, man, in the in the old world where, you know, life was much different, and we were like, ah, oh, eating at restaurants is so annoying because of this one little minor inconvenience. But it is nice to just be able to sit down and be like, here's the menu. Uh, here's, I'm, I'm gonna look at like an itemized list of what I'm ordering. Instead of having to, like, visualize in my head what the bill might look like. Uh, and then, you know, literally just pay right there. And then as soon as you're done eating, you can just leave. That's, like, I don't know if, if I'm, like, a, a, a proto-Gen Z millennial or something like that. But, like, oh, dude, we never had this item! This might be an This might be it! This, this might be Dead God? Spirit Sword and Sacred Orb? I don't know. We I don't think we'll know until the run's over, maybe. But we might be missing one more item. Talk about getting a bad taste out of your mouth, man. This run's so good, like, I'm feeling dead alive. And also, so many items. It's like we're part of the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers Return of the King. I'm a big fan of... Look, I can understand. I think, you know, if... Next time my parents come to Vancouver, if if they eat, if they eat with me, I'm happy to be their liaison, right? But if they go out to eat at a restaurant by themselves and they, there's just like a little icon on the table, um, and no menu and no server comes around for like you know ten minutes, they're they're gonna lose their minds. They're gonna they're gonna be like excuse, and they're not bad customers by the way. They're they're very like. Pro, I mean, I've, I've never seen my mom kick up a fuss at a restaurant at all. I have uh, not seen my dad kick up a fuss. But my dad is the kind of guy where, like, even if there's a restaurant, like, he wanted to go to, if we walk in and there's, like, a five-minute wait, he's like, we're going to try someplace else. <laughs> and there's things you inherit from your parents, like, not just genetically, but, like, you know, socially as well, behaviorally. There's things you disinherit from your parents. And I, I'm, I'm happy to have put an end, at least uh, on an individual level, to that behavior in myself. Now I'm like, if I want to eat at a restaurant and they're like, it'll be a half hour, I'm like, cool, I gotta just look at my phone, man. No big deal. Thanks so much for accommodating us. Table for two. I know it's hard in today's modern world to find a place to seat two people. but And I'm not being sarcastic. I'm, I'm being an ally. Okay? This is a heck of a run. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. I, I think, and, and I'm stopping very short, as always, of being like, well, I think, you know, th at least one good thing came out of all this. Like, obviously, this is a situation uh, where the juice was not worth the squeeze. <laughs> I think we could just... I mean, Bone Spurs is kind of okay. I think you could suck those up for flies, though. Um, like, obviously, the pandemic sucked and, and continues to suck. Um, however, I do think it's, it's a positive thing for my dining experience. You know, it doesn't work for every place. One thing I've noticed is, you know, sometimes, you know, especially on vacation, I might be like a two-beer Marty. It doesn't feel right to order, uh, 
you know, two uh, beers with your food because they'll show up at the same time. Uh, so instead, you know, are you going to really like scan and open up the app again and then be like, you know, hey, give me another one. Uh, and the answer is no, most of the time. So instead, I just have one beer with dinner, uh, which is probably like better, both financially and, you know, also from a, you know, liver based hepatological standpoint. I think that's what that's what we refer to liver medicine as, right? It's some old Greek word. Which means the Diego. It's an Anchorman reference. Look it up, honey. But it is, it's probably worse for the restaurant, especially, you know, this is a pub to begin with. But uh, apart from that, well, you know, if they, could, if they could just have a QR code you scan and then it's like, hey, bring me another one of those. That Now we're talking. But I, I think it's a positive. Now I got myself hungry, man. Eat a... Nice chickpea wrap after this. I'm not gonna fight Mega Satan. Like I know, after all that, why wouldn't I fight Mega Satan? Wasn't on the randomizer, honey. <laughs> That's not really it. Really, it's that I have 12 minutes to go until the stream. Um, would like to get some planning done. Would like to eat some lunch. Maybe go to the bathroom coordinate some stuff with people. Plus, this run is like, it's in the books. You know how many times I've fought Mega Satan at this point in my life, man? Like, life's too short. I will say that just just by existing, you know, th this run has done a lot to make me appreciate Tainted Apollyon. I, I already ranked them pretty high in the fun tier list. I think I ranked them, I should have at least, I mean, this is maybe a bit of a biased sample, to be honest, but I think I ranked them pretty high in the uh, in the strong tier list as well. Maybe you can't judge every single run just based on the uh, you know the best run you maybe have ever had in your entire life, but <laughs> I don't think this is the best run we've ever had. But it, it is darn good. Go ahead, like honestly, just go ahead and hit me. We have the wafer. No, nothing you do can harm me. I remain perfect from now on. We've hit every dead end. Like, nothing can harm me physically more than dead ends can harm me psychologically. Come on, come on, come on. I don't even know what to say about this run. I, I've learned a lot about the power of Sacred Orb. I have absolutely no concept of how strong or how weak Spirit Sword is. Um, I think we did great things with Abyss. And you know what? We got the, the perfect combination of, uh, of what we needed to make Eddie Rooms pop. And, and man, oh man, like it, it worked. I know you can spin, by the way. I'm just not convinced that's actually like worth it here. Hey, 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 don't take away my ranged attack. Don't you take away my ranged attack. Okay, beautiful run. That was uh, a lot of fun. No dead god. Hold on. You gotta check, okay? Two question marks still remain. I don't know what they are, but we'll figure it out for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. I'm so great. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.